Shane, look, it's a ghost. You're right, it is a ghost. That's a big one. Yeah, it's a big male. It's a bull ghost. It might be a bull ghost, and it might just be a large female. No, that's a bull. Bull ghost. Bull ghost. Bull ghost. You know, green screen suits are not just a simple effect that you can just click a button and the green suit goes away. It's a little tricky. It's never flat, so there's always light and shadow areas on it. And if you try to light it perfectly for King, then you probably aren't lighting your scene the way you would want. But a green screen suit is still a very useful tool to have in your video toolbox because there are a lot of cool effects that you can do with it if you just work with it. In today's video, we were asked to create a ghost by putting a sheet over a person in a green screen suit and erasing the legs. Simple, right? Kind of, but there are some challenges to doing this, and I want to tell you how to address those challenges as they come up. A lot of it has to do with planning the shot. Two of the main things that can cause you problems when editing are shadows and reflections. For shadows, you need to look out for shadows being cast on the ground or wall behind the green. Avoid it if possible. You'll have two video layers, a foreground layer with a green screen suit and an empty background layer that won't have any shadows. So if your foreground layer is casting shadows where the green is being removed, you will see something like this and it will give away the effect. You can darken your background layer to try to match it, but if you can just avoid this problem altogether, it's better. The other issue to consider when planning a shot is reflection. Is the green screen suit being reflected in the floor or on a table or something? And can you key that reflection out also? Because if you see the green suit in the reflection, it will ruin the effect. The more I work with a green screen suit, the more I see that good planning saves so much time when it comes to editing. So when I have my shot planned and I'm ready to shoot, the first thing I do is put the camera on a tripod and lock it down. It must remain in the exact same position for your foreground and background footage. I also need to make sure that I adjust the sheet so that it never goes behind the green suit. If it does, it will look like this and the effect won't look good. I also want to make a few changes in the camera to make sure that the foreground and background footage match as much as possible. I set the white balance, the ISO, and the focus to manual. If I don't do this, my background footage can have a very different color or brightness to my foreground footage and it'll not look right when I try to pull the key. One more thing I look at is how the green screen suit looks in the shot. Does it have enough light on it for the camera to be able to tell that it's green? How evenly lit is it? I make any adjustments I can to get the lighting how I want it for the scene, but the green screen suit still to be as lit as evenly as possible. After I have my settings correct and my shot planned and my camera locked down, I shoot my footage. I shot my footage this time in slow motion so that the sheet would move in a more ghostly like manner. I'd like to point out this is obviously not the only method you could use to create this floating ghost like sheet effect, but we were asked to do it with a green screen suit so that's what we're doing. Next week I'll show you how we could do it with Rotobrush 2.0, but for right now let's go on into After Effects and get started. In After Effects I have my two clips. The top clip is the foreground footage with my ghost and the bottom clip is my background footage. If I solo it, you can see that it's just an empty background. The white balance, brightness, and focal distance should all be the same on both clips because I set them to manual. The first thing I want to do is rename my clips. So I name the top one foreground and the bottom one background. I want to key out the green legs in the foreground so I drag in key light 1.2. You can use a different key here, but I'm going to use this one because key light comes for free in After Effects. I really want to get this edge next to the sheet as good as possible, and that can be a little trickly. Trickly? It can be tricky. I use the eyedrop picker for screen color, and I pick a color right next to the edge of the leg. You might have to experiment with what shade of green works best for your footage, but for mine, this edge color works pretty well. Much of the legs is keyed out now, and with a few adjustments, I can fix this up a lot better. I like to switch back and forth in view between screen matte and final result as I work on this. In screen matte view, the black areas are keyed out and the white areas are not. The areas that aren't fully black will only be partly transparent. As I make adjustments to the setting, I can see how it affects the black and white areas. But back in final result view, I ended up with these settings. I set screen gain to 126, 
which erase a little more of the keyed edges. Under the screen matte dropdown, I set the shrink grow layer to negative four, and I set the screen softness to 5.5, just to soften the edges of the mask. You will have different settings for your footage since your footage is different, but these are the settings that are almost working for my footage. For some reason, my background layer is slightly lighter and you can see the outline of the legs. It's just because of the shadows that the ghost cast, but I can fix that. I just go into my background layer and drag in a curves effect and make some minor changes until the background matches. Now, the one problem that I have left is that the floor was just reflective enough to reflect the green suit legs. Instead of trying to set up a separate key to key them out, I'm actually going to get rid of them by using a mask. I go to my background layer and use the Control D to duplicate it and I move background two to the top. I hide that layer while I draw a simple mask over the reflection of the legs and I make the background two layer visible again. I can use the toggle mask button here to see how to blend the edges better and then I just adjust the feather of the mask. If I need to, I can click the stopwatch on the mask path and animate it to move and follow the legs, but the ghost stayed in one place for this clip so I don't need to do that. This pretty much erases the leg reflections and now I can render it out and see what we have. And when I watch the clip, the legs are gone. Okay, I want to cover one more example of this effect, this time outside at night. And this example has shadows on the ground instead of reflections from the legs. So we'll need to address that too. Again, I have two video layers, a foreground layer and a clean background plate. The background is a little brighter than my foreground, so I'll have to fix that in a little bit too. I again name my top layer foreground and my bottom layer background. I go in the timeline to a point that I can see the legs pretty good and drag key light 1.2 into the foreground layer. There are a lot of shades of green here, so I use the eyedropper from the screen color and choose a medium shade of green from the edge of the leg. I adjust the screen gain up to about 140 and then open the drop down for screen matte. I switch my view from final result to matte view just to help me see how it's being keyed. The legs are very black in matte view, but I can see some other black that I'm going to need to try to get rid of. I actually start by adjusting the screen gain a little bit more. Then under screen matte drop down, I adjust the clip white down a little bit and it gets rid of some more of the unwanted black. I'm also going to adjust the screen shrink and grow and increase the size of the black a little more. Next, I adjust the screen softness to soften the edges and make them blend better. I continue to adjust the screen gain and clip until I get the legs good and black. This clutter up here won't really be a problem because when it keys out, I still have the same image underneath. I change my view from screen matte back to final result and I see that I need to adjust my shrink and grow a little bit more to help hide the legs better. Now I still have a little issue with the brightness of the background layer, so I drag a curves effect into my background layer and adjust it until it matches. Then I go back to my foreground and make some final adjustments to make the legs as invisible as possible. The last issue is the shadows of the legs, which would be seen while the ghost is running, and I wanna get rid of that, so I duplicate my background layer and move it to the top. I hide the layer and draw a mask over the leg's shadows. If I toggle the mask visibility, I can see the hard line. So I feather the mask pretty heavily and that will hide the legs. Now I open the mask dropdown and on mask path, I click the stopwatch to set a keyframe. I click the mask visibility back on and I notice some artifacts on the lines in the street. So I just adjust my mask to cover that too. Then I go through my footage and I animate the mask to roughly stay in position over the leg shadows while still covering the lines in the street. After I render it, I have a spooky slow motion ghost running down the street. These two examples showed some of the common problems you might encounter when doing green screen suit effects, and a few tricks to overcome them. These tricks can be applied to other effects you might try with a green screen suit, and we'll be doing more videos about some of those effects, so please consider subscribing and click the bell icon to get notified when we release those videos. As always, thanks for watching this video, and we'll see you next time. I literally just sit here and wait till the next video. I don't do anything else.